I want to go through the uh, practice test one question at a time. So the first question you were given a right triangle and you with a hypotenuse of one and a 40 degree angle and the question was in a different triangle with a 40 degree angle and the adjacent side is 35. So the thing to notice is that these questions, these are similar triangles because they have all three angles congruent and you can set up a proportion x over 35 hypotenuse over the short side is the other hypotenuse over the other short side. And you cross multiply 0 0.7660 x equals 35. Divide both sides by 0 0.7660 and get x equals 35 divided by 0 0.7660 which equals 45.7 rounded to the nearest tenth. In the second question, it was called 1.5, you were given a triangle with a 33 degree angle and a one here. And they wanted to know the other two sides. Now in general, if you have an angle here, and the hypotenuse is 1, which it is in this case, the opposite side is going to be sine and the adjacent side is going to be cosine. So in this case, you were given, so x is sine 33, which you were given a trig table. It had a, a lot of missing values, but it had a lot of given values also, in this case, it was given that sine 33 is 0.5446, and for the y, it's cosine 33, which was also given on the chart 8387. Question 2. Two 2A. We were given a triangle right triangle with a 24 degree angle and a hypotenuse of 15. Now, in right triangle questions, we look at what we're given, in this case the hypotenuse, and what they're asking us for, in this case, the opposite side. So-called Sokotoa says we can use, since we're dealing with the opposite and the hypotenuse, we can say sine 24 is equal to x over 15. Now, just for instructional purposes, I'm going to look up sine 24. We were given it on the trig chart. And this is telling us that x is a little less than half of 15, that the ratio of the opposite hypotenuse is 0 0.4067. It's like the opposite is 41% as big as the hypotenuse. But you can just cross multiply now and get x equals 15 times 0 0.406, uh, 0 0.4067. And that equals about 6.1. Now 2b was a similar question. In this one, there's a 51 degree angle. 23 is the adjacent side, and they don't know the hypotenuse. So in this one, since we're dealing with the adjacent and the hypotenuse, we want to use cosine. So cosine of 51 is 23 over x. Usually what people do here is they just say x cosine 51 equals 23 and divide both sides by cosine 51. But for instructional purposes, I am going to right here, since I have the trig chart, is look up cosine 51. It's given to us on the chart, 0 0.6293.
that's saying that the adjacent side is about 63% as big as the hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is, is going to be bigger. But what is it exactly? If you cross multiply, 0.6293x equals 23. x is 23 divided by 0.6293 which is about 36.5. Uh, question three is talking about, uh, there's three questions. Two of them are dealing with 30, 60, 90 triangles. And one of them is dealing with a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So in 30, 60, 90 triangles, in general, if this side is called S, the short side, the long side is going to be double, and the medium side is going to be the S times the square root of 3. So in this question, we're told the hypotenuse, which is the double of the short side, which means the short side is half of that, and the medium side is the short side times the square root of 3. Here I have the 30, 60, 90 triangle with the 30 in the bottom left. Still the same ratios, though. Here the medium side is 5 radical 3. So the difference between the medium side and the small side is you divide by square root of 3, in this case, the square root of 3 kind of disappears, and the long side is double the short side. Now, for a 45, 45, 90, the ratio is 1, or I'll call it S. S over radical 2, and this is also S over radical 2. Sometimes people like to write it this way. 1, 1, radical 2, or S, 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 radical 2. They're, they're, they're both true. So if, the, um, so if the hypotenuse had a square root of 2 on it, like it was 18, radical 2, then these would both be 18. But it didn't, so we can just write 18 divided by radical 2. If you want to rationalize the denominator, you can multiply by root 2 over root 2 and get um, 9 root 2. These questions ask for exact answers, so you would have to have the radicals. You wouldn't do a decimal approximation. Question number 4. They want to know cosine of 42. Well, there's a rule that cosine of theta is sine of 90 minus theta. Which basically means that cosine 42 should be equal to sine of 48, because they add up to 90. And fortunately, on the trig table that I gave you, although cosine 42 wasn't there, sine 48 was, and that's all that needed to be done for question number four. For question number five, they want to know about cosine of 21 degrees. Now, cosine 21 is equal to sine 90 minus 21, 69 degrees. But on the chart, this is not given. So instead, we're going to use the rule that cosine is the square root of 1 minus sine squared, and that was given on the reference sheet. So cosine of 21 is square root of 1 minus sine of 21 squared. Cosine of 21 is the square root of 1 minus. Now sine 21 is given as 0.3584 squared. Now on those little calculators that was hard to do, but you'll get to use a regular calculator on the, um, on the actual uh, test, so it ends up 
as 0.9335. Uh, question six, it just says sine 24 equals cosine of blank, and those two things need to add up to 90. So 90 minus 24 is 66. So not much work to do on question uh, number six. For question number seven, they gave us this diagram. It has a 36 degree angle here, a 72 here, and a 72 here, which makes this 36, and this 36, and this 72. Uh, this is an angle bisector. It was given as that. And this, um, so what, what, what I see here is this is an isosceles triangle, 36, 72, 72. And this obtuse one's also a right, uh, also an isosceles triangle because it has 36s on both corners, which means that if this is 5, well, this is also 5 because of the red isosceles triangle. But the green, uh, the green triangle is isosceles also, so this is also 5, and that's the answer to the question. So, uh, in, in the, when we did that in class, they wanted to know about this also. But since we don't know the, hypot the, the length of the entire side, we're not able to answer that question. Okay, question number eight gives you two similar triangles. One was small, one was big. And there's a lot of x's here. But we set up a proportion, 3 over x. Those are the two sides in the smaller triangle. The corresponds with This x corresponds with the 3. And this 2 minus x corresponds with the x. Now you cross multiply. 6 minus 3x. Oops. This should be 3 over x. This should be x over. 3, 6 minus 3x equals x squared. Bring everything over to one side. And it doesn't factor, so you have to use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. We're not going to need to do the minus because that would end up becoming negative. So it's negative 3 plus the square root. b squared is 9. 4ac is 4 times 1 times negative 6 is plus 24 over 2 times 1, or negative 3 plus the square root of 33 over 2, which is the answer to that question. There's a decimal approximation, but this is, you could leave it like that. Question 9 has a semicircle. It has a 42 degree angle and a 1 here. And they want to know the length of this diagonal line, AE. Well, the first thing to realize is that if this is 42 degrees here, 180 minus 42 is 138. So this obtuse angle is 138. And the other two angles, they also add up to, three, six, to 180, sorry. So the other two angles have to add up to 42. But this is an isosceles triangle because this, this is a radius and so is this. So actually these angles are both going to be 21 degrees. And one of the questions was how big is that angle in the corner, uh, EAD, and it was 21 degrees. Now the next question was how big is the hypotenuse? Well, here is a big green right triangle. Hold on. Okay, there's a green right triangle here. And the three sides of that triangle are not so hard to get because 
Remember the 42 degree? You might look back at um, question number 1.5. If this is 42 degrees, this is sine 42, this is cosine 42. Now, sine 42 was given as 0.6691. Now, I didn't give you cosine 42 on a test. I For this question, I would have given it to you. Sorry, I didn't give it to you. The problem was in question number four, I asked you to find cosine 42, so I removed it. But on the actual test, it would be given to you. So let's assume that it was given to you. Uh, cosine 42 is 0.7431. And this is 0.6691. So it's a right triangle. And the sides are, this entire bottom side is 1.7431. So to get the length here, you just do the Pythagorean theorem. It's the square root of 0.6691 squared plus 1.7431 squared. And you'll have a calculator, a graphing calculator, so it won't be so hard to answer that at about 1.8671. Uh, question 10, they're telling you sine and cosine, sine of 17.46 is about 0.3, and cosine 17.46 is about 0.9539, and they want to know what's the sine of 8.73. Well, we have a formula, sine of half of an angle is sine of the full angle over the square root of the square of sine of the angle plus the square of 1 plus cosine of the angle. That's a formula given to you on the sheet. So we just plug in. In this case, it's going to be sine of 17.46 over the square root of sine of 17, sine squared 17.46 plus 1 plus cosine 17.46 squared. That turns into 0.3 over the square root of 0.3 squared plus 1.9539 squared. And you, you'll have a nice calculator, so you won't have that issue. Um, if you pop that all into the calculator, you get about 0.1517, which was the answer to number 10. Number 11, they wanted to know what sine of 9 degrees. And there's several ways to do this. I'm going to, one way is uh, 9 is half of 18. So it would be sine of 9 over the square root of the square of the sine of 9 plus 1 plus cosine of 9. Sorry, this will be 18 here. Those are all 18s. Now cosine, those numbers are all in the, uh, in the chart. So it's 0 0.309 over the square root of 0 0.309 squared. And cosine of 18 is 0 0.9511. Whoops, you have to add one to it. So 1.9511 squared. And you put that, uh, you put that all into the calculator. and it becomes 0.1564 approximately. For number 12, we have this picture that has a right triangle up here with a 21 degree angle and a second right triangle over here that has a 39 degree angle. And they want to know all these different lengths, x, y, W, Z, sorry, W. Let's start with 
this 21 degree one. If I take this triangle and kind of flat straighten it out, this is one, by the way. This is the same as question 1.5 now. The opposite side is sine 21. The adjacent side is cosine 21. And those values are both given to us. Sorry, they should be on a test, but one of them is given, 3, 5, 8, 4. Cosine 21 was actually calculated in question 5, but on the test, I promise I will give you cosine 20. Or I'll give you what you need for this on the chart. It will already be filled in, 0.9336. And those are, the, those are actually the first two answers, 0.3584 and 0.9336. Now, that 0.9936 is very important because that's actually not just the leg of the top triangle, but it's also the hypotenuse of this one, 0.933. Actually, I think it's 9335. Let's see. Now you can use SOHCAHTOA if you want. I mean, I personally, for this sort of question like to use this relationship that it's r instead of one i put r for the hypotenuse everything gets scaled up r sine theta r cosine theta in this case the r is 0.9335 so i would just say 0.9335 times sine 39 and this other one is 0.9335 times cosine 39 Uh, sine 39 and cosine 39 are both given in the, um, they're both given. So this first one, sine 39, is 0 0.6293, and, it, and that's why the answer for Z was 0 0.5875, whereas for this one, cosine 39 was 0 0.7771. You multiply those and get 0 0.7254. Just want to say a little bit more about the second triangle. Make it bigger. The hypotenuse is 0 0.9335, 39 degrees. You could use Sokotoa. You could say to get the Y, you could say sine of 39 is equal to Y over 0 0.9335. And it will lead you to the same 0 0.9335 times sine 39. On the other hand, if you want to get the X, it's the adjacent. So you could say cosine 39 equals x over 0.9335. Either way, you end up with the answer from the, from the second question gets used. You end up multiplying it, in this case, by um, cosine 39, just like happened over here. Question 13, they want to know about sine 27. I think they give a hint. They say uh, use 12 and 15. So sine 27 is sine of 15 plus 12. And there's a formula, sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. Then you look up these values. They're all given on the chart. Oops, that's for the other one. 0 0.20, wait. I did it, I, I, well, hold on, let me make sure I have this right. So, so I have sine 15.2588, cosine 12 is 0 0.9781, uh, cosine 15 is 0.9659, and sine 12 is 0 0.2079. Anyway, you put that all into the calculator and get that. And for the last question, I'll do something kind of funny with this one. I'll erase the 13, turn it into a 14. And the only difference is sine 3 is now 15 minus 12. And the only difference that makes is in my formula, this has a minus now. 
which means this is a minus. And instead, I get a different answer, which is 0 0.0523. So that's the whole test in 25 minutes explained.